The Penang Woman Project with its intricate weaving patterns have become a fashion trendsetter with its iconic hand-woven designs. A brand that weaves not just baskets, but one that helps to weave a better life for mothers who need to support their families and education for their children. To date, 80 to 100 Penang Woman weavers from 14 villages in Ulubaram have benefited from their weaving projects. In today's episode, we speak to the Penang Woman Project on their noble mission to help weavers earn sustainable income through their weaving. Hello and welcome to Brand Pulse with me, Mariana, as your host. In today's episode, iconic hand-woven bags have become immensely popular, not just in Sarawak but also in Malaysia. Founded by Shida Morjet, affectionately known as the mother of Penan bags, Shida now resides in Netherlands and the project is now led by Anne Wong. Hi, Welcome thank you. to the show, Anne, Anne uh, the founder of and also advisor of Penang Women Project. Yes, hello. Yes. Good morning. Let us you. get started by sharing your story. Uh, can you tell a little bit about yourself? Um, hi, my name is Anne and uh, I started this uh, co-found with uh, Shida, I think in uh, late uh, 2015. So it's like uh, six, six years, years ago, yeah. six years ago when I met her and I just wanted to be a volunteer because that time um, I got my kids and the kids started to go to school and I thought I had some free time. Uh, what not to just go and volunteer my time rather than sit at home, do nothing. So then uh, I always have a passion with the uh, craft and even pure before uh, before I worked with um, this Pana Woman project, I was... Uh, volunteering with this craft hub, mm -hmm. um, which is also uh, looking into craft, Sarawak craft. So when I was in Miri, so I met Shida and I said, I want to be a volunteer. And when I look at the back, I said, there is a potential there. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, during that time, I think um, they have just started maybe for about maybe six, seven, six, seven years already with yeah. Shida. Yes. And then um, I look at the product, I said that, um, there is a potential. The workmanship can uh, we can uh, you know upgrade the you know make it really quality quality, quality uh, Sarawak craft because um, as you can see we have a lot of uh, souvenir in Sarawak. When people come and visit, they want to buy something. And myself, like when I go visit a place, I also want to buy a really good quality um, local produce you know craft. So. I think the bag is uh, something that mm -hmm. can, you know, grow really well. And uh, How so about when, the brand? The brand why, why Penan Woman Project? Um, because uh, when we started, it's with the Penan women. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Shida wanted to help them to generate income and uh, also um, to, so they can sustain themselves rather than uh, us always go around asking for donation and how to help them. They need to help themselves first. So what what we're looking at is their skill. What can they do? How do we use this skill to um, um, to give them a job? So, because they cannot come out to a town or come out, you know, somewhere to work, the best way is for them to work at home. Right. And the tagline is actually very strong: empowering yes. women through weaving. Can you explain a little bit more? Yes. So when we help them with the weaving. Uh, instead of giving them food, you know, just give them, but we help them, we teach them how to fish, right? So when they can uh, weave, because this is their traditional skill, uh, a lot of them can weave. They weave in rattan. So um, when they weave, we buy it from them with a fair price, and then we sell it to market, we help them to market out, and they get paid. Then they can look after themselves, they look after their family, you know, they become the... Um, the breadwinner of the house, you know, yes. yeah. they, they bring in money to the family they, because uh, a lot of them, the husband, they're all living in rural of Sarawak, like right. really far way in, in the right. jungle. A lot of people may be wondering, how much of the proceed actually goes back to the Penang community? Uh, with the Penang Women Project, it's 100%. What we earn, the profit that we uh, earn, we we have to, um, you know, keep stock. We have to buy material. We have to do uh, product development, and also a part of the fund that we go into do other projects. That is not, um, not with the weavers. So we have another part that 
go to the Penan who are not in the weaving project because if we talk about um, the women, we maybe have about 60 to 80s women that uh, uh, we work together. I would like to say we are, we are a company because we work together. So there is no boss or who, like, they, they like to call me Tauke. I said, I'm, I'm not Tauke, just call me Anne. You know, we are all friends. We work together. I use my skill to help you because like for them, they weave, but they don't have the design sense. They don't know how to uh, present their work. So I'll be the person that help them in the front. Right. Like okay. and, uh, with the production yes. and everything. Mm -hmm. So when we do with the print, Penan Women Project, mm -hmm. I think the name is really apt yeah. at there, yeah. you know, Penan Women Project right. is, uh, mm -hmm. it is, you don't need to explain a lot, it's, you know, it's helping right. the Penan Women. Thank, uh, thank you, Anne, so much for your, uh, thank you so much for your explanation. So I believe the ultimate goal of Penan Women Project, you know, and your volunteers is actually uh, to, to empower the, the, the weavers to actually earn a sustainable income yes. through weaving. Yes. Okay. We will now take a short break and when we return, Anne will be sharing more about the innovation and the challenges in running Penan Women Project. Welcome back to Brand Pulse and with me here is Anne Won, the co-founder and advisor of Penan Women Project. Yes. Thank, thank you once again for joining us on the show. Yes. Uh, earlier before the break, we actually uh, asked what are the innovation behind your bags uh, in terms of the colours, the design, the materials. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. Um, yes, um, as, at the beginning it's only bags and then now we try to uh, go into more of like home living and then uh, play with a, a different design like this one we call like a uh, bako bonchit because it's like big fat belly so so we, we try to uh, introduce different design and make it interesting like uh, that that basket um, is a very uh, traditional uh, weaving but then we make it into a, a bag that it become really fashionable and also we work with uh, local other local uh, brand to put things together and uh, make it really like a, a fashion statement sometimes it can be. I'm sure young girls will carry that, you know, rather than they've been thinking this like uh, a grandma basket, right? Nowadays, we try to uh, introduce it into the house. You can even use this in an office, like a, a file, sure, yeah. you put things. So we, we try to um, widen the range mm -hmm. of the product right. to uh, attract different uses mm. of this so the women can weave more yeah. so they have a uh, demand yes. on all this product and i understand like uh, the crafts most of the crafts the materials are made of plastic um, are you considering to convert it to more eco-friendly materials in the future perhaps yeah um so uh, a lot of uh, we, we get this question a lot a lot of time people ask us why don't you use uh, keep on using rattan but there's one thing we need to know uh, right now in our rainforest, we don't have a lot of rattan. Yeah. And then we don't have this, um, what do you call it, uh, rattan farming. Yes. So they all plant, planted in uh, the jungle. Um, I know that like WWF, they came in and uh, give some rattan seeding for the weavers to plant it. But they only get maybe like 10, 20 seeding, but that 10 and 10 and 20 seeding will need five to seven years to grow yeah, into I, rattan. I, yeah, I actually use. own a few, you know, uh, bags like this mm -hmm. and it has lasted me a few years. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure it's yeah, in terms of durability. It's, yeah, and mm. rattan is uh, need a lot of time to harvest, to produce and and it's not as durable as, as this. This is called P5, it's uh, polypropylene, so it's non-toxic. And then um, it's actually, you know, those cargo strapping belt, the belt that uh, wrap the cargo, like packing. So it's really durable and it's really, uh, what we say, um, uh, it can stand time. And like one bag can last you, or, or one, if you take good care of it, it lasts five to six years. So it's not a one-time use plastic right. compared to those. It, it can last a long time. All right. Okay, uh, let us talk about uh, Penang Women Project being a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sure not everything is rosy, you know? Yeah. yeah you, <laughs> yes, you have to manage everything from end to end, from the mm-hmm. design, logistic, marketing, and even branding. Yes. So how do you cope? What are your challenges faced and how did you overcome this? Um, not relying on friends, you know, volunteers. Yes, friends yeah. are very, very important. <laughs> I would say friends is very, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have, uh, yeah, the volunteer friends are uh, very important that are helping because we are social enterprise and we are very small group. A lot of people think, oh, we might be a lot of people behind. Actually, there is only maybe two or three key person in helping. Like I'm the main person uh, with uh, working with the um, production. I have to talk to the weavers and it's not not just giving them order, but we are friends you know, with the weaver. Um, I'm like their friends. I'm like the mother sort of things. Yeah. Anytime they have problem, personal problem, family problem, they will come to me. I need to spend time talk to them. So it's not just, okay, just make this and yeah. done. But a lot of time, uh, we spend a lot of time with them. Um, not just talking about basket. So, uh, uh, yeah, need a lot of uh, effort in there. True. And then talking about, let's say, you know, in terms of heritage preservation, we mm. know that weaving is actually a dying art. Yeah, uh, it is. It's risk fading away, actually. Mm-hmm. How, how did uh, Penang Woman Project actually preserve or extend the weaving, weaving art atau, mm-hmm. or the, the expertise to the next generation? Um, I can see that uh, before that, uh, when they weave rattan, um, mostly the elderly, you know, will do it. And nowadays, when we weave with this, the younger generation started to come in and weave as well. Because uh, when they do rattan, is a hideous work, you know, um, to to produce the to uh, what fiber. Is it? Yeah, fiber, fiber the yeah. rattan take a long time. So I think a lot of uh, you know young people they don't have that patience, you know, so they don't want to do that. But with this, at least. It's right there, they just string and then they can start weaving. And a lot of our weavers are young mother, like um, because the Penan tend to marry really young. Mm-hmm. So after they marry, they have kids, they can't go out to work or do anything. And in the jungle, in the rural uh, kampong, the only thing they can do is weaving. So they start to learn how to weave and it's easier for them to do it because um, things are right there, we send it to them. Then right. they can start weaving. Yeah. They learn from the mothers. That's that's very inspiring to hear. You know, mm. despite all the challenges that you face, actually, Pena Woman Project and your volunteers, you have actually created a ripple effect. You know, in the yes, yeah, in a healthy ecosystem that actually uh, new emerging markets on the fashion icon. Yeah, yeah being yeah. a fashion icon is already up. We will now take a short break, and when we return, and we'll be sharing its exclusive and premium range. Hello and welcome back to Brand Pulse. So Anne, earlier before the break, uh, we talked about your product reveal. So can you share with us what you have today? Okay, so um, after all these uh, bags that we have from Penang Women Project, a lot of time we get uh, customer, I think it started maybe five years, start, uh, the customer always said, the only thing about the Penang bag is the safety because it's open widely. They can't really use it, uh, you know, as a handbag. It's more like they just can put, you know, like bottles, things, you know, that's not really important. So that has been in my mind for a long time. And uh, it took me like three, more than three years to design what we have today, which is uh, our new range. I will call it the more of the premium item Mm -hmm. because um, I have to work on with our own design. Actually, went to manufacture to make our own handle um, because with the usual penang bag, the handle sometimes break off after a few years. So what we did is um, um, the handle can be changed if you can change the handle into leather or whatever whatever color. Yes. And the 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 thing the that most important, most important yeah. thing I think all our fans are waiting for is the. Uh, zip zip up the um, right. What do you call that? Uh, security in there. So this one is uh, we try to um, target um, our 
uh, what do you call working, it? Working adults? Working adults and working. Uh, most of our our fans, what we call it, our yeah. followers, our supporters that who have been looking for this, I think this will make them really happy. Yes, I will definitely <laughs> get one of these too. Yeah, and it, you yes. can put things, it's like right. you can put your iPad in, you can put a uh, bottle, umbrella, it, it's yes. something like I want to use, right. so I design it. How and, about this? And this one, yeah. I, we often get the, the man also say, how about us? Don't forget us. So yeah, we, we, we design something like, you know, more exclusive um, uh, laptop, laptop holder, oh, yes. folder so they can use it. And we also design something for the younger generation. I think nowadays it's very um, in the fashion right now. Shoulder strap. Shoulder strap. Yeah. And we also make it, can make it longer. So this is something that uh, we try to work on. Uh, in our more on um, what you call the exclusive and premium uh, line of uh, Penang Woman Project, and the name is called Engkabang. Engkabang. Yes, you um, know the fruit the Engkabang. Fruit. Yes. I love that because um, you know the Engkabang tree it grow in like seven years, only it fruits once, and when the fruits come down, it's like helicopter going yes. down, and that. Is something that I always remember when I visit. Uh, uh, I went into jungle, jungle hiking okay. and saw that coming down. And right. That stick in my mind. Yes. So, from your inspiring st stories, yes. I'm sure a lot of people will be, will be wondering where do can they get a haul of the bag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As now we we kind of uh, we're gonna launch it uh, launch it. Uh, I think before end of this year. So the production is already there. And uh, we are just waiting for um, just a, a few back end things that I'm still trying to okay. fine tune it a bit. Right. Um, just follow our Facebook, and then uh, contact us from our Facebook, and uh, we'll can yeah. yeah whenever I, I we launch, uh, we gonna announce it. No, no, with it with right. Facebook. Okay, thank you, Anne, for that. Maybe uh, let us move on to the next question. Sure. Uh, we have talked about you know your uh, contribution and what you have done, your challenges. Last but not least, you know, you have come so far for the past six years. Mm. What is the social impact or the achievement, uh, sort of the report card, you know, for your enterprise? Uh, can you share with us what's your success story? Like? Mm, yeah, I, I find that um, our Penan, because the, the focus is on the Penan women, right? These Penan, uh, Penan weavers. Uh, one of our success story will be... Uh, one of my weavers that um, she she's very um, what do you call it um, not business sure. minded. She wanted to improve, like rather than just making uh, bags, and she wanted to change her family life. So uh, we help her in uh, setting up a a little shops, you know, in in the kampong. So An she independent can, enterprise on her own. Yes, oh. and selling you know selling what do you call it kedarun chit, you know, mm. grocery little grocery store. And uh, and also we have uh, other weavers that started. Um, we also help other weavers to in farming, because um, to weave a bag, I don't think you can weave for your whole life, right? Because a trendy thing, you, you don't know how long can you push it, you know, uh, how far can you push it. But we also encourage them. If you have any idea, we can help you. Then we will help you by our means. Um, to set up, let's say, a small little, little chicken farm or a, a fruit farm, then, uh, yeah. To improve their life. To improve their, their life. I think that yeah. things will be, they will have that for their whole life. Okay. Rather than us keep, Can. yeah, nice. babysit. Um, last but not least, um, I'm sure there are a lot of young entrepreneurs outside mm -hmm. who wish to start their social enterprise mm -hmm. like you. You know, being one of the successful entrepreneurs, uh, social enterprise in Sarawak, what would be your advice to them? Mm, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. And then uh, don't give up. Um, have passion with what you are doing. I think that is very, very important. Yes. Thank you, Anne, for your you know truly inspiring story. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you also for joining us on the show. We are actually very inspired uh, you. with you and your teams of volunteers yes. who have uh, created this ecosystem to actually a positive social impact back mm -hmm. to the communities, be it the Penan, the volunteers themselves, the families, friends, and even every single buyer you know of uh, Penan bags. Yes, uh, like the Penan would say, Tian Kenin, thank you. Tian Kenin, thank you. Uh, Thank you. This is the brand story of Penan Woman Project, a brand that not only weaves basket, 
but also help in weaving to a better life for the local communities. And we will see you in the next episode of Brand Pulse with more brand insights from business leaders on how they manage and turn crises into opportunities. Thank you for watching Brand Pulse and see you next time. Thank you.